Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. In the last episode we came here to the ancient castle of Ikana. And we unlocked something. Well, we, we got a heart container with some irritating guys kicking around, and we unlocked somewhere in the roof a boulder slid open. We're gonna deal with that more this episode, because if you remember, we come in here. Oh dear, I haven't got my mask ready. That'll do. Remember, Gibdos are, not Gibdos, what are these, Redeads, are dangerous, uh, and you want to make sure they are impotent, which you do so by wearing any of the three Akana masks, the Gibdo mask, the Garrow's mask, or the Captain's hat. I'm going to switch over actually to the Captain's hat because I don't tend to wear the Garrow mask around because occasionally it triggers Garrow's, actually, shockingly, that's that's kind of its thing. Where did my Captain's hat go? There we go. Um, right, let's slap that on, and while I'm in here, we also need fire arrows. There we go. So yes, from the map you can see we went round to that way, no not that way, that way, um, which is unlocked, but this way is locked. But we can break through that by melting this eye switch on the right. So generally while walking around here I would wear the old um, Nikana mask of some sort, I'm going to also get the bunny hood ready on there, but we don't need it right away. But yes, there are Gibdos hanging around anywhere. Here is a new enemy, so this creepy thing going around is... You know the Floor Master, right? If you don't do something about its pieces before they can reunite... But the nice thing about the Floor Master is you can stun it with the Mirror Shield. And when it's stunned, it splits into three, as as Tattle said, and you have to kill the three pieces before they reunite. Much like Gibdos, it pays up quite severely upon its death, which is great. And do remember this for later. Uh, that's all I'll say, a few episodes time, but... If we shine at this... Then we get some more Gibdos around here. These ones are doing different dances. That one's doing the same ones before. These two are doing that kind of thing. And this one's doing the Dara Rasputin Cossack dance. Um, but like the other ones, we can blend through them with remarkable ease. A nice jump attack from the Gilded Sword is a guarantee to take a Gibdo down in one hit. Helps that they can't fight back. Don't feel great about that, but hey. Through here, well, I'm going to switch the Bonnie Hood and it's time for a, an irritating enemy to resurface. They really do reuse these guys in this game uh, too much. Once he's appeared, jump slash him with the Gilded Sword. I don't think we had a Gilded Sword last time we fought these things, so at least that can kill him rather quickly. There we go. Once he's real, again, jump slash, and that should be him onto the irritating second phase. At least this is a tiny room, so it's relatively easy to, to fight him in. Uh, which one's real? Which one's real? That one's real. Excellent. That should be... Oh, no, he still takes two jump slashes, doesn't he? Ugh. And that one there. The bunny hood just makes it easier to close the difference on him. Distance on him, even. Yeah, this... Oh, yes, I forgot it's the final day. So we'll hear the old rumblies occasionally. Um, but, yes, we do get to come across the, the um, Gibdos. Uh, not Gibdos. We do come across Gibdos through here. And they're not Gibdos, they're re damn it. Uh, yes, they will fuck you up and surprise you if you're not wearing any kind of hat as you go through the door. But, obviously, you can be prepared for that. As you can see, we've got nearly 500 rupees now. It's great. Um, just from killing a lot of Gibdos. Uh, stop calling them Gibdos, you fool. Anyway, yeah, Wizrobe, I feel, get, does get annoyingly reused in this game. Um, but what we need to do is, so now we are basically on the rooftop, but on the other side. So that's what we did last time. Ooh, scary moon. We moved this block out of the way. We could go down after it, but that will just lead us to that room that we were just in where we fought the Wallmaster. Uh, the floor master even. That's why there was light shining into that room, which is why it's good to go around the left-hand side first. What we actually want to do is go here, and there's this cracked bit, and Navi sir, Tattle says, Here, see? You always miss things like this. Take a look. The rocks are cracked here. So the final thing on my shopping list from last episode, if you cast your mind back, you will remember, was a powder keg. We can only use powder kegs as Goron, so if we quickly Goron up and drop one down here. I believe we can actually set it off nice and early, rather than waiting the usual 20 seconds with a fire arrow. Wonderful. Uh, time top down, then. Oh, Gibdos! Ooh, not Gibdos, they're re-dead. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm not even going to bother killing them, because I actually haven't got enough space for all their money. Um, wow, but, but I did. But now we've got light coming through here, which means we can laser this bit. And now head on to the central room of the castle, which will definitely not contain anything spooky. Oh, there's actually another door. And we get into what is, for want of a better phrase, definitely the throne room.
Oh, insolent one who has brought an unthinkable, the unthinkable into a land as dark as Akana. My servants have fallen namelessly before the light that guides you. However, the darkness in which my servants live is, after all, fleeting. You shall see with your own eyes. Just what kind of thing true darkness really is. <laughs> so, we begin a battle with the Court of Akana. So we've got these guys here. If you if you mention to uh, call tackle, she says, Use our targeting methods while defending. The unthinkable? What could that possibly be in a place as dark as this? And there's your hint. We saw it on the way in. You can actually just hit them now, but you won't be able to defeat them in this manner. Because you'll notice, knock them both down. Battle's not over, though. we got to have a way to finish them, which is up here. And with that light on, we can shine that light on their bodies. Except that was slightly too slow there. But basically what you need to do is knock them down, and then once they're down, you can finish them off with the mirror shield. So this one here, um, now dead forever. It's kind of like Stalfoss in other games where you had to bomb them when they're down. With these guys, you got to laser them to finish off the job. <laughs> and so with that, the man himself starts the fight. But we're wearing the captain's hat. Oh, Keita! Is it not Captain Keita? But you're so... TINY! I was nearly fooled by you! Yeah, it turns out the masks in this game, in a lot of ways, are almost like a kind of Jedi mind trick thing. Uh, that they only work on the... They only work on the weak will to a certain extent, because... Obviously, the mask doesn't actually really make you look like Captain Keita, because as he says, you're tiny. It just, it's able to convince the simple types of people that, that that's what's going on. But, that, but it doesn't always work, and when they focus on it, they're like, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. Which is, which is kind of cool, because it's... It makes it clear, though I'd always kind of thought it to a certain extent, that yeah, the masks work by making people see what the mask wants them to, or like, leave your embodied with the spirit of something, rather than make people actually legitimately think you're a 20 foot tall, um, Stalfos. Anyway, yes, he does this annoying thing where he, um, no, oh, bugger, bugger me, where he detaches his head. There's your chance to get it. He does that kind of breathy thing. I didn't actually want to shine light on him there, because it's not particularly helpful. You gotta kind of wait for him to make a move, and then... Oh, try and get him, but he's... Oh, he's detached his damn head again. Can I shoot it? No, I can't. What does Tackle say here? Oh, Tackle says nothing. That's not very useful. So yeah, his, his head floats around and his body uh, still attacks you. Shining light or anything is useless here. Oh, he's he's possessed me. Um, can you fuck off, mate? Right, he should be reattaching. Good, and we'll hit him up the ass. He's a nice chance to. There we go. Oh, I need to remember to not- I keep trying to use jump attacks, you've got to thrust at him, it's the only easy way of doing it. There we go, because thrusting is just much quicker. Alright, he's, he's much faster, as you can see, than his minions. Um, and you really have to wait for him to make a move, and, and then take advantage of your moment. But your moments are very small there. And just, yeah, I thought she said something about basic stuff. Um, I thought she was going to tell us this bloke's name, but yeah, she actually doesn't. Oh, god, he's fast! Oh, come on. Oh my god, there we go. I don't like to cut during boss fights, but I remember this one being much, much more interesting. There's not really anything going on. He block... I remember it being much more like... <laughs> I just want to say much more interesting, because here I'm just waiting for a chance to hit him, unless, again, I'm doing something wrong, but I don't think I am. Oh, for God's sake. There we go, and then he's down, and then you laser him with the mirror shield, and he also disappears. Oh, you're blocking me. Get out of the way. I can still get him. I'm blocking you? The reason he beat us is because you were so feeble. Don't blame this on me. What? Just try saying that again to my bony face. Feeble. Feeble, 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 feeble. Shut up already! Ugh, don't look at me, I was once called the best swordsman in all Akana. 
the greatest swordsman in all of Akana, you feeble. Draw your weapon. What? I'm telling you to draw your sword. How? <laughs> Will you stop that? What fools! Haven't you begun to understand? The kingdom being ruined and thus left in this state. Isn't it petty little battles like this that caused it? Believing in your friends and embracing that belief by forgiving failure. These feelings have vanished from our hearts. It all happened after that somebody thrust after somebody thrust open the doors of that stone tower. You who bring light into darkness, I am the king of the Akana Kingdom, Igos Duyakana. The spell binding that had been cast upon us was broken by that light which you carry. To return true light to this land, you must seal the doors of the stone tower where the winds of darkness blow through. But the stone tower is an impenetrable stronghold. Even hundreds of soldiers from my kingdom would not be able to topple it. It is far too reckless for one to take on such a challenge. And so, I grant you a soldier who has no heart, one who will not falter in the darkness. You shall remember this song. Ah, balls! Tried to do it too quickly again. Terrible. You played the Elegy of Emptiness, and boy is it spooky. You learned the Elegy of Emptiness. It's a mystical song that allows you to shed a, sca a shell shaped in your current image. By playing the song while wearing masks to assume different forms, you'll be able to leave up to four empty shells, one for each form. The soldier who has no heart is your twin image, a shell of yourself that you will shed when your song commands it. On my kingdom, shine the light of justice. Those things are deeply creepy. The ones for the different forms are, are less bad, but the one for Human Link, like Hylian Link, is particularly disturbing. Anyway, I put the mask on because I have a worrying feeling that shit's respawned through here because those those re-dead really just respawn at the top, top of, drop of a hat. Yep, and here they are indeed. I don't need any more money, so I'm actually going to head off to the bank. Um, we should have enough time to do what I want to do this episode? Um, let's find out. Not at episode time, like literal in-game time, because uh, it's midday on the final day. Ah, we'll be fine. Right, I'm going to head back to clock down and bank my money, and then I'll meet you back in Ikana Village. So in case anyone was wondering what Stone Tower was, you can see it from about half of Termina. Um, you see this this structure on the horizon. Um, but it's it's that massive thing there. Can we actually get to it from over this? Oh, we can actually. There's a slope up there. There's a guai following me, but... Yes, we'll do it later on if we need to, but uh, going into the ancient castle of Ikana, and there's a nice shortcut in there that means we'd have to do the well again, and just repeatedly killing Gibdos is probably the quickest single way in the game to get money, because with those masks on, you're invincible, you can't die from Gibdos. No, you're not invincible, they just won't hurt you. But anyway, yes, this is Stone Tower. Be prepared for some of the greatest dungeon, definitely the greatest dungeon design in Majora's Mask, some of the greatest dungeon design in Zelda Full Stop, and fantastic music. So yes, this is the Stone Tower, and it takes two kind of forms. What we're doing here is just to get up to the temple itself, and don't worry, I am aware of the time, we'll be fine. Um, there's a switch here, if I press it, that thing lifts up, um, and I don't want to do anything with that quite yet. You'll see why in just a second. If you get off it, it goes back down. That's the kind of overarching thing with this puzzle, um, are these switches and what they do. Um, and of course we'll be using that song we just got. I'm just killing that bee moss first. I'm not sure we've actually seen bee moss in this game yet. Oh well. But yes, if we press this second switch, another block rises straight up. And we want to keep this switch pressed down. So, we know how to do that. Yeah. 
So, that creates a spooky thing there. The advantage that has it, well, is that creepy form will keep the switch pressed down for us there. So, there's a specific order you have to do all of these puzzles in. There's only one, it's like a block puzzle, but vertical. This is the only order that they work in. So next, I'm going to go on up. If I were to play the Elegy of Emptiness, oh, balls. Actually, no, it is this one, isn't it? Yes. Um, if I were to play the Elegy of Emptiness as a human again, then it would move the statue up to here and release that previous switch, which isn't great. We want to set a new one, which means placing this one here. And that's the creepy Goron shell. With that placed, we actually now want to drop back down to the beginning and place a third one here. Because if we hit this switch, you'll see that block goes into position and then the second one can now move again and follow sweet. There's one specific order to do all of these in. So this first one you do middle, then top, then bottom. So finally, we place a hollow man as... There we go. Hollow man as Azora, which is equally creepy. You can make a Deku one, but nine times out of ten, it's not heavy enough to hold any specific switch down, so you will all find you almost never actually use them. Yeah, they all look vaguely hollow and kind of pain somehow. They're very creepy. Um, and they're just, they're very Majora's Mask and they're very Akana Canyon specifically. Um, but going up, that's kind of how the dungeon as a whole, well, this, this part of the dungeon at least, works. So I'm going to let the music play while I proceed upwards, because it's great. Once again, I'll never learn with this game that when I say, oh, I'm going to let the music play, and when I'm going around playing bloody songs all the time, there's enemies still around to be fought, the music doesn't play constantly, so once again, I'll have to have, you know, dubbed it over in post. Fun fact, if you don't press any buttons here, it'll show you the thing spawning every time, but if you press A, then you just skip um, the cutscene of the, of the Hollow Man forming, and you can just walk away, which is... Very useful. So there you'll notice I placed it on the second one, like kind of the middle layer first, then I've come back down and placed it on the bottom layer, and then the final one I'm going to place right up at the top. There is only one order in which you have to press all these switches, and it can be irritating to find out because the way in which the blocks move is kind of unusual, that it's this is more of a trial and error process than anything else, um, because you can't really predict how they're going to move. But there you go, there's the final one, and so when we um, put a bloke on this one as well. Fun fact, you could also only do this within the stone tower. It's the only place in, in, in the game that you can actually do this. Probably to avoid weird shit happening. Um, and I need to... Oh, oh, that's that one going back up from downstairs. Oh no, it's just it was... Apparently the switch does... The statue doesn't become solid until it's become solid. The statue doesn't press down the switch until it's become solid. There we go. And that one's it coming off the bottom one, I suppose. And there we go. We can now cross over to this final one. There is some shit you can do kind of here if you grapple up uh, in a slightly different way. There's various rupees that can be found, but it's not really worth it at this stage, especially with a limited amount of time, both in the episode and and before the, the apocalypse. Uh, how the fuck did I get up? It was it's not up there, is it? Oh, did I have to just go up to the edge on this one? Yeah, I think. Um, it's... You can just make that, kind of. Wow, that's a lot of moon up there, which is weirdly not affected by the fog. Don't know if that's normally a case or whether that's just the case of my specific system. Anyway, you could, yeah, you can get over there and get some shit from the old Scarecrow song. But what we wanted to do is right up at the top over here. I was comfortable doing that this late in the day because there's an owl statue here. The real entrance to Stone Tower. This is the Stone Tower. The entrance to Stone Tower Temple is over there. 
and we are going to be doing that both next episode and back at the beginning of the dawn of the first day. Because, um, because we've not got enough time to do it now. God, I'm not starting a massive temple at this point. Absolutely not. So, thank you for watching this episode. We have fought the Ancient King of Akana and learned the Elegy of Emptiness. We've used it to climb Stone Tower. Next episode, we'll be going into the temple to purify it. Thank you very much, and good day.